Hey everybody! Welcome to the Jane and Stitches Show. It's been a while since we did a video on project journaling. Project journaling is something that I love to do. Um, I, it comes and goes out of my life depending on the time I have available to do it. I've certainly had more time on my hands <laughs> lately and I love it because it's a way for me to organize all of my patterns, so to keep track of them all, and also to keep track of the project itself. So sometimes I've got photographs of it, sometimes I, I want a place to keep all of my um, the labels from my yarn, maybe some samples of the yarn. It's just kind of a neat way to make notes on a pattern and a project so that when I go back to it later I can enjoy the memory of having made that project or if I want to go back and make something again, which I often do, um, I don't have it all kind of like readily available in my brain so it's nice to keep those notes handy on a particular project. So I mean like you know, what, what hook I used, the kind of yarn I used, if I substituted yarn, if I needed more. Um, so I like to keep all of that kind of in one place. And it's a bit like scrapbooking. You can have a lot of fun project journaling. And if you like playing with paper or you do want to keep track of your labels or you do want to have sort of more of an organized history of the kinds of projects that you've created or just a neat and tidy way to organize all your crochet patterns without having them sort of piling up in folders or something, then hopefully today we'll have a few more fun little ideas and suggestions for you. I have been keeping most of my printed patterns, so most of my patterns I print off on your standard 8.5 by 11 paper, so your office paper, and I tend to keep them all in binders. It's the easiest way to keep them all together. I like to put them in um, these little plastic insert pockets so that uh, I don't have to three-hole punch the pattern itself. These are often a little stronger, you know, they've got sort of the three-hole punch worked in, but they're reinforced, the spine. So when you're, you know, endlessly turning the pages in your binder, you're not constantly putting um, too much pressure or strain on the paper part of your pattern. So I like to use these plastic insert pages. And it allows me to either staple or clip my pattern together and just slip it in there. It's just easier. Um, and then I can also put other stuff in there with it. So some of my binders have been falling apart. <laughs> and since it's back to school season, all of the back to school supplies are now available. You can see them in stores. They're also available online. So however you are capable of doing your shopping right now, or even if you've just got old school supplies lying around, then I thought I would show you kind of what I'm doing today. Starting a new binder. Uh, Mr. and Stitches made me um, a title page. <laughs> <laughs> I often like to have a title page for my binders, for my journals, and Mr. and Stitches designed one for me. Um, it was kind of like a neat sort of combination of ideas. Uh, last year, Crystal suggested that we um, create a downloadable logo um, so that people might be able to use it uh, when they were keeping uh, binders of their own Jade and Stitches patterns. Um, if you just want a sticker or something, Mr. Stitches also designed some stickers, some die cut stickers. I think there's our logo. There's Lula and Bella. They're available in our Teespring shop. Um, we'll make sure there's a link to that in the description shop down below. Um, but he also designed um, some uh, binder related stuff for me and I loved it so much that he put it together into a kit and it's available as a downloadable pattern project kit basically in our Etsy shop. So <laughs> that's the title page. It's super cute. It's got sort of our little logo and everything on it. He designed that and it also comes with spines. So if you've got a binder that's got like a little plastic insert thing here, um, he designed three different spines. One for a one inch, a two inch, and a three inch. And they're all a little bit different. Um, that's the one inch. I haven't used it yet. And that's the three inch. So I haven't used, I haven't trimmed these up and used them yet, but I've got the one inch, or I've got the two inch going because I started a new two inch binder. Um, depending on how many patterns you have, you might want to organize them by, okay, these are all my toys, or this is all my clothing pattern, or these are all my doilies, or however, it, like, we tend to gravitate to um, specific kinds or groups of patterns. I like to kind of make a little bit of everything, so I've got all sorts of everything. <laughs> but Mama and Stitches has a whole binder on just, like, tablecloths, for example, um, and patterns that friends have given her. and you will accumulate patterns from different sources too. You might sort of print out free ones on the internet. We've got a whole whack load on our website, as a matter of fact. Um, it's on the Pattern Workshop page, so if you are just getting started putting together a pattern project journal of your own, 
We've got lots of free patterns there you can print out and use. Um, you can also find them sometimes on the labels of yarn. So yarn labels often, they used to, now with the internet a lot of them just sort of redirect you to their website, but old pattern labels are, or yarn labels often had patterns on the inside, some of them still do. Uh, my grandmother kept a lot of these, so I have a lot of old labels. Um, and these all need to kind of be kept somewhere. Um, you can keep them in shoe boxes, you can keep them in, in um, you know, any kind of organizational way that you feel works best for you, but I love having a bookshelf with a library of patterns and also kind of a, uh, a combination of that and photo album. So photo album, pattern, project, journal, scrapbook, the whole thing, right, sort of squish it all together, and that's how I like to do my project journals. So I'm starting a new binder. I've put in my <laughs> my recent title page. I've got my spine on the back. Um, I love this pink color. Um, I love binders that have a, a pretty different color. And that's another thing too. If you can find binders that are different colors, that can also help kind of identify, oh, that pink, that's all my toys, or the blue, that's all my clothes or something. Um, or if you just want to color code them because you want them to work with the decor of your room, you can do that too. <laughs> and then, um, so I've got, I've got a couple here. I'm just going to show you. For example, um, we've got a pattern for barefoot sandals. We did a tutorial a few years ago. Barefoot sandals are really cute. They're kind of like a, a medium weight thread project, so like a size three thread. And it's a pretty simple little um, design. You can tie them on to your feet and you're still technically barefoot, but it's kind of like wearing some pretty little crochet jewelry on your feet. It's really cute if you're gonna go to the beach or you're just sort of patting around by the pool or even just out on the patio. Or it's hot, you're barefoot, and you just want to look at something pretty on your feet. <laughs> um, so we also included that as a free pattern on our website. And this is basically what I did. I have the pattern in this little, um, this little package here. So there's the pattern in behind. And I kept some notes. And this is, I also made like a little, I like sometimes to make little miniature versions of things um, using tiny little crochet thread. So. It's a way to use up my thread scraps and it's fun to actually have a physical crocheted piece to put in my journal. So that's what I did here. I made a little miniature version of the actual barefoot sandal motif and I glued it to some paper. I put some notes in here. So I've got, you know, cotton thread, the size of the hook that I used. Um, I mentioned that I think they're really cute and they're comfy. Like, so I used cotton so that feels nice and soft on my feet. Um, I made little notes like that. This is something I've made a few times, so um, I didn't have to make too many notes on the actual um, pattern itself. And then of course I decorated it. Um, I like to think of the beach. I like to think of sort of being away on vacation. And this is where the scrapbooking part comes in. So I've included some project notes, the actual sort of little thing uh, that I made. So I made a little miniature version of it. I also have um, a little kind of diagram that I sketched up uh, from when I was originally designing them. So I cut that out, I included it here. Um, I drew a couple little things, I've got some stickers in there. I just made like a cute little beach scene. So when I'm turning the page in my project journal and I get to the barefoot sandals, it's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like just going away on a little vacation and I'm reminded of the mindset I was in when I made them. So like I said, I love to scrapbook too. So that's kind of like the little, it's, it's like decorating my actual project. And all of my information is in here. So I've got um, notes in behind it on my, the actual uh, pattern that I printed out. So I've got some notes written down on it. I've got other little things like, um, I didn't have any labels for this specific one because I was using yarn that didn't have labels on it, although I knew what it was. Um, so, but normally I would also include the labels. So for example, um, here's one that I've been working on for our Granny Square game. I'm trying to make notes about the Granny Squares that I'm making because this is a project in in progress. So this is going to be that scarf that I'm working on with the granny squares that we're making with the granny square game. So I've included some scraps of the actual yarn that I'm using in here. Um, and this is sort of the little project note sheet that comes in the journal, um, the journal kit that Mr. and Stitch has designed. So it kind of prompts me to remember to include um, bits of the yarn. It reminds me to kind of make sure I write down important notes like the hook I was using, especially for something like a granny square. Granny squares and a lot of patterns can be 
very flexible in the kind of yarn that you use and the hook size that you use depending on the project you're using them for. So things like granny squares are just building blocks. And because I'm using this game to make a specific kind of square for a scarf, I wanted to make sure I made notes about it. So how many rounds I was using for the actual scarf, the kind of yarn I was using. I've got actual bits of the yarn here. Um, and because I like to do miniature things to decorate, I even crocheted some miniature granny squares using crochet thread and a tiny little hook just to use as decoration because I thought that looked really cute. Um, I've also made notes about how to uh, make sure I can wash my uh, my yarn or the project when it's done. But like I say, this one's a project in progress and there's going to be fabric associated with it too. So by the end of it, I will also have like little bits of the fabric to include in this as well. Um, I'm going to just take this out though. I'm going to show you a couple things. So I've got the pattern clipped to the actual notes thing. On the back, I included all of the uh, labels of the yarns that, that were the main yarns used in that particular um, set of granny squares. So it's this old yarn that I bought an eon ago and I've, I loved it and I've been waiting sort of for a project to use it in and I'm definitely going to be using it all up with these um, squares so I don't have to worry about you know keeping the label with the yarn right now so I've included all of my labels already on the back of my notes sheet and this is great so if I go back in time you know like several years from now and I think oh what did I use all that information is right there including the labels um, and that the labels also have further information on like, you know, maintenance of the yarn, making sure you wash it properly, the size of the yarn, the fiber content, all that important stuff. Um, and then I just like to bust out my stickers and add a couple of little extra bits and pieces here and there just to make it kind of cute and fun to look at. So I can put that whole thing together. In this case, I'm using a clip. I haven't stapled it because it's still a work in progress. So I'm using just a sort of a clip. And then I can just slide it all back into my little my little plastic insert. And then I can just pop that back into my binder. And I love binders. They kind of give me that feeling like I'm keeping stuff organized. I love that snap. <laughs> and there you go. Now that's sort of in my binder and I know where to go and get it. And it's all neat and tidy and put in one place. And when I open it up years from now and look through it, I'll be reminded of the fun I had putting that together and um, and if I want to do it again I've got all the information handy so that's the start of my new binder now I wanted to share some fun things so a couple of ideas that you might want to consider if you're going to get into this um, if you don't know what you're doing this evening or this weekend and you've been looking at that pile of patterns <laughs> up next to you then this might be something you want to consider doing it's fun to play with office and school supplies and I love the organization that comes out of it so being able to put just a sort of a set of binders on a shelf somewhere um, or even like if you have to stack them in a closet it's just a lot neater and it's safer for your patterns um, in the long run than having them all kind of like stuffed into a duo tang or a folder or something which I have been guilty of I will admit I have not gotten around to organizing in a while so I've really been enjoying the time doing that. few other ideas so um, obviously the plastic insert pages are great to clip and keep all of your patterns together in. you can slide them in you can slide them out you can keep other little cute things like the labels or scraps of yarn so even if you don't want to sort of glue it all together or tape it all down you can just jam it all into one of those little pockets and it's all kind of safe it's another reason why I've liked using um, scrapbooking books as well because they're already kind of set up to be like a, just a big clear pocket that you slide stuff into. I've used those too um, but I like using binders and the prep the page inserts are easy to come by uh, so I like that. If some of you are old enough to remember when we were all buying CDs <laughs> or DVDs some of you might have some of these lying around. These were Mr. and Stitches and he just gave them to me because I said oh I could probably use those. These are again three hole punched um, inserts for a binder. The idea was that you could slide CDs into them. Um, we don't have a whole lot of CDs anymore um, and so he has more of these than he really needs so he gave them to me and I've just been keeping some of my smaller projects in it. So for example I love um, this snowflake that we did several years ago. Um, I created a little pocket for that 
to sort of, I've highlighted one of the actual um, snowflakes and then I've got the little pattern um, down here. So I've, and I hand wrote it because I liked the way it all fit onto one little page. But that's another freebie on our website. Um, and you don't have to, like, you can also just fold the whole pattern up if you're using something small like this and just tuck the pattern into one of the pockets, especially if you want to sort of decorate a little bit. We've also got, got um, we did a little star, our little star, I think we have a free pattern for that on our website too. Um, it's another simple and tiny little applique. You can use that pattern with a bunch of different yarns and a bunch of different hook sizes. So you can use it and the snowflake, little things like appliques you can just use for a whole lot of different projects. And depending on the hook size you use and the kind of yarn you use, they can they can be really flexible. So it's a really like, it's kind of like a, it's like a motif, like a granny square. It's got a lot of different options and it doesn't always have to be made with the same size hook and the same kind of yarn. Um, so I printed out the pattern and I even folded a little bit over and I have just, just cute things. So like I can pull this out and I can open up the pattern if I need to be reminded of how to do it. And then I can fold it back up and put it in. And I've done things again, like included simple little notes, um, like sometimes the, the hook I use. Here I said, any hook, any yarn, stellar applications. <laughs> Is in the in the years that I've been crocheting, I've used that little star pattern many, 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 many times for a lot of different stuff. So, um, and then I've got cute little things like that's a, a little sort of bedazzle, um, shiny plastic star sticker. So I stuck that on there, and I just you know I'm having fun with different kinds of of paper. Um, I was into scrapbooking for a while, so I do have a lot of that kind of stuff just left over from my scrapbooking days, and you know, why not just chop it up and use it and work in a small little spot. So these little kinds of um, three whole insert pages for CDs, business cards, baseball cards, if you have sort of empty sheets like that lying around, you can use them for tiny little things like really small applique patterns, or even um, if you are making a whole lot of little things for your make ahead stash, so I've gotten on a real run lately of making these little crochet covered buttons, these little button flowers. Um, pockets like that are a great place to slip a whole bunch of these little tiny things, little appliques, little thread bits of projects, maybe special little buttons that you don't have a place for. You can tuck them all into these little um, pouches, for lack of a better word, and just slip them into your binder. So you know where they are, they're not going to get crushed, they're not going to get lost, you don't have to worry about keeping them in a shoebox or something, and then they're all nice and neatly organized, and you can keep the pattern with them. So you've got everything in one place. I really like that. Um, that's what I did with our little hearts, and uh, on the other side I did a little miniature granny square, and I even have like the little pattern for that super mini granny square, and I, I made one and I stuck it in there. Uh, this is fun. I don't know. I, I love sort of re reacquainting myself with little the little patterns and stuff that we've done. Um, I think this is also on our, uh, I think the hearts and this one are also on our web page as a free pattern. It's this little tiny miniature tree um, applique. So a little tiny applique. It's, these are great for anything. You can use them as present toppers, you can hang them on trees, you can turn them into um, you can turn them into actual patches for things, you can stitch them onto stuff, you can glue them onto things, you can turn them into fridge magnets, whatever. Um, that one I actually put beads on to make it into an actual little Christmas tree. And again, I've included the pattern here, I've decorated it, I've got a plain one on the back. Um, so this little folder's got like two different versions of it in there. Included the hook size, a couple comments about things. I said here, <laughs> mini garland, gift topper, ugly sweater, stocking, gift tag, scrapbook. So just some uh, ideas for myself. If I'm short on ideas or I'm trying to remember something or I have another project that I wanna work on, it's fun to go back through these journals because often you'll make things that you completely forgot you did or you'll have patterns that you completely forgot you have and you'll be like, oh my gosh, that's perfect for this particular project. Thank goodness I kept that. <laughs> Um, so that's a fun way to use up some of those little inserts that you might have lying around. It's a good way to repurpose stuff, you know, so it's not sort of gathering dust somewhere and um, you can use it for something a lot more fun. That brings me to the recent pile of goodies that I got myself. Um, this is just to sort of kind of keep organizing my project journals. Um, I have been really burning through a lot of the stuff that I already had, so I needed to get a little bit more. And I love waiting around until back to school season because a lot of it becomes 
available. It's um, maybe more options than there usually are around the rest of the year. And none of this has to be expensive. Like I said, you can just use what you've ever you've got lying on hand or you've gone, you know, pick up some stuff. Um, when you're picking up stuff for the kids, get a couple things for yourself. <laughs> um, so to start, I needed new markers. Um, the marker set that I've been using, Mr. and Stitches got me actually as a wedding present. <laughs> Many, 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 many years ago, so it was time for a new set. So um, I got a set of Sharpies. Um, these are all available right now in varying different sized, um, sizes with different color sets and stuff. I just love using markers. They're fun to write on um, like cardstock. So maybe not just plain paper, but if you've got cardstock lying around. And if you don't buy cardstock, but you want something firmer to mount some of your smaller things to. So for example, if you made a bunch of little you know, tiny little appliques or maybe some of these thread buttons and you, you know, you want them to be displayed nicely, then save your cardboard food packaging because cardboard food packaging is the perfect cardstock size. It's a nice thin cardboard. It's easy to cut up. Um, you can paste some paper over it if you want or just flip it upside down. The back of it is usually like a nice plain light cardboard color or sometimes it's even white depending on the packaging. And you can just chop that up and use it and you can glue things, you can stitch things to it. Um, you can just run a very simple, I don't know, I've got that, I don't know if I've got one of those ready to show you, but you can just simply take a needle and thread and run it through it once and not the thread behind on the other side of the board or the paper and just sort of simply sew tack it to something so that if you need it later you can just snip the thread and pull it off. I've done that all the time. Um, so yeah, I picked up some, some more Sharpies. Can't wait to get into those. I picked up some more rhinestones. I found these, um, a package for sale on Amazon actually. When the package got here it was a bit crushed and typically when you take apart a package that some things come in, you can't really put it back together. So. Ziploc bags are your friends. I just transferred everything into that Ziploc bag and it's just an assortment of little plastic backed rhinestones. Um, I like to glue these in to some of my <laughs> some of my project journals just for an added little bit of shine or bling. I like I like shinies. <laughs> Might have been a crow in my former life. Um, another thing that is really great is this is this is it's kind of like those little things that have the corrector tape in it. So if you're writing with a pen and you use the corrector tape, this is the same exact um, dispenser, but it dispenses glue, basically. A nice little thin line of glue, kind of like tape. It rolls on nice and neat and tidy. And then you can, you can sort of control where it starts, where it finishes, and you can use that instead of wet glue. This is like a kind of like a dry tacky glue. I love this stuff. So I picked up a package of that. I always have one of those lying around. It's a lot easier to use than glue and it doesn't get everywhere. <laughs> you also don't have to worry about like squeezing glue on the back of something and squishing it down and all the glue squeezing out both sides. Um, so I like that. This is called permanent adhesive roller. Permanent adhesive roller. And it's a pack of six. Um, I found that on Amazon as well. These are something new I've never tried before. I love to paint. Um, these are acrylic painter pens. Um, I haven't even gotten into them. So maybe I'll do that right now. I'll show you what they look like. Oh, okay. So they're all individually wrapped, which is nice. But it's like a pen. And you shake it up. It's kind of like there's a little ball in it that rolls around. And then you can just use it like you would a marker, but it's actually acrylic paint that comes out. So it's kind of like a much more controlled way to paint. And it's kind of fun. So if you wanted to do like little little drawings or little sketches of something that is, you know, adjacent to your project or is your project, especially if you like kind of just sort of doing little sketches when you're on the phone with somebody, then this is kind of a neat way to add a little bit of color, a little bit of, you know, something fancy to your project. So I've never had these. I'm going to give them a try. I like to paint. I like markers, so I figured a combination of the two might be kind of fun. So these are called acrylic painters, acrylic painter. It's a water-based ink, waterproof, UV resistant, opaque, odorless. Um, incidentally, they're okay for kids too, so non-toxic. Washi tape. I've never had washi tape. I've used everything but. Washi tape, for those of you who don't know, is basically just like scotch tape, but it's pretty. <laughs> So I'll open this up and I'll show you what it looks like. I think this one came from Japan. 
<clears throat> this is a really good sticker. box has a whole bunch in it but that is what it looks like it's like a little tiny roll of tape and this one has really pretty little flowers that are all outlined in gold leaf around it and basically it's just a nice way to tape down pictures tape down little sketches tape down little charts um, you know anything you might want to just sort of tack in on the corners and you can also just use it as a pretty border around a picture or around your entire page. So washi tape is fun. It's just kind of like, it's very pretty adhesive. Washi, W-A-S-H-I, washi. So if you've never used that, that's fun too. So I got a kiss of that. Um, burlap is great. I love burlap. This is pre-cut burlap sheets that are eight and a half inch by 11 inch, so the same size as your standard office paper. And it's, it makes for a really cool background. So if you're, if you've got something small, like a little tiny applique, or you've just made notes on a project because it's only like two or three lines, and you've got this tiny little piece of pattern, and then you've made a couple of those little things like I did with my, um, with my snowflake, for example, you can, because of the way burlap is created, you can stitch through the burlap, you can sort of stitch down a couple of your things, whether it's your like your buttons or your little appliques. You can glue stuff to it if you want it to be more permanent. You can tape stuff to it if you like. And it just has this really beautiful texture, uh, a really neat appeal. It's very sturdy. It even smells really nice. I really like burlap. I also got some cardstock. So I really like cardstock. Cardstock can also be chopped up and used for a lot of different things. And like I said, if you can't get your hands on cardstock, then keep your cardboard food packaging because that stuff is really great for crafting of all kinds. But I've, I use that stuff all the time. But I did pick up some really pretty cardstock. So instead of it just being white, and you can get white, I do get, I use a lot of white for, you know, um, I write a lot of stuff on cardstock. I want to keep sort of notes or I want to make like a little title page. I will often use white cardstock. So I got a package of that. I think that's also from Amazon. Amazon also has something called Amazon Essentials. So if you do do any shopping on Amazon, um, because you know you live rurally and it's easier to order online, um, Amazon Essentials is a line of Amazon actual products that they usually have handy. So you don't have to wait a long time for it to arrive from like another country or something. Um, they're usually fairly well priced. Um, they're not like overly expensive. And it's very good quality. So any of the Amazon Essentials office supplies, for example, that I've gotten has been pretty, really good quality. So it's fine. Look for deals, look for add-on deals. Amazon often does that as well. Add-on deals is a little blue button that appears, appears on a listing on Amazon. This is add-on. And it's often just a better deal than normal because they have a whole lot of excess in stock or something. Um, I also picked up some additional pretty colored card stock. So this is some, this is all shades of purple and it's a bunch of different kinds of little patterns. So I've got like some cute little um, flowery looking things, some just sort of some nice pretty lines. I just like to have this again to mount stuff to. It's kind of does the decorating for you and, um, and it's card stock so it's solid. And I go through a lot of solid colors. There's a whole bunch of different colors in there. I'm going to see if you can see the side of that. Um, there's black, every different color of the rainbow. It's a really nice package of cardstock. So I've got enough cardstock now to see me through for quite a while. And this is basically what I'm doing. I was running out. I was using up all the stuff that I've had for years. And because I've been pretty busy during this lockdown, kind of reorganizing and everything, I've been going through it. So a um, couple other things. I still have a couple of uh, size 12 old scrapbooks that I'll be using for some um, larger patterns or some more patterns that I've made multiple times and I have a lot more kind of notes and photographs to to keep track of. Um, so I just picked up again another package of scrapbook paper. This is really really pretty because it all looks like old-fashioned um, prints. So like old photographs, um, old like sketches, old journal entries, all really old kind of paper. And I like that very muted color sort of background. So I thought that that would look really nice in behind 
my mounted, you know, whether I've printed off the pattern or I've got like photographs or I'm keeping all my labels or something. I just really like that very neutral background colors in that. So I got a case of that and I got this. This is just some really fun and exciting paper. These are much more brighter, bolder prints. There's some cute cardstock imagery that can be punched out or cut out here. It's just kind of like a scrapbooking kit in a way, um, but it's all about family, <laughs> which I thought was like super cute. Um, and actually the whole reason I got it is because of this one little thing right here. It's this little mason jar with a big heart on it. And I loved that image just so much that I, I got the whole kit. <laughs> Um, so that's it for the paper that I got, and I have one more thing I wanted to show you today. This is another little um, quick peek inside my brain. I have a real weakness for stickers. I love stickers. I collect them, I use them, I stick them on everything. I always include them when I'm working on a project journal or a pattern entry. I always put a sticker on it. Um, I use stickers in my everyday um, schedule so I've got an, an old-fashioned paper agenda I love to do things the old school way and I always have stickers I'm always putting a little sticker on and I started doing this a long long time ago but it sort of became not only a habit that I just continued to do but stickers make me happy so if I'm having a bad day and I'm looking at that journal because I've got this list of things I have to get done you know and I'm checking stuff off using little stickers is sometimes a way to make me feel a little bit better about myself and um, I don't know stickers are cute and fun so I found this package on Amazon. It wasn't terribly expensive, but it has something like over 1,800 different puffy stickers. And if you're a girl from the 80s, puffy stickers, ladies, that was where it was at. Um, oh my gosh. So, oh wow. So there apparently are no two little sticker things alike in here. So here's one that's just some cute numbers. The uh, the, the smiley faces that are absolutely mandatory. We've got cute little animals. We've got a whole bunch of different sheets of little animals. Um, maybe Mr. Stitch will show a little bit of this closer to the camera for me. Um, there's everything. I've got fruit. I've got fish. I've got, oh my gosh, I've got little tiny like doll dresses and stuff. Um, just pretty much anything you can think of. It's a real random assortment of very nice quality stickers. Um, and over 1800 of them and it really wasn't that expensive and it came in this package and I will definitely be using these. <laughs> I make a lot of stuffed toys so it's fun to add like a little stuffed toy sticker so if I make a little stuffed toy bear it's fun to have little bear stickers. I just like the ability to add something extra to my journal that just makes it fun to go back and look at down the road and I will say this if you've never thought of journaling your projects or taking photographs of them and keeping an album. Um, it might not seem important to you now. Um, I talk a lot about being able to go back and look at it down the road, you know, when it's time has passed and you want to be able to see something you've done. Maybe you want to refer to it because you want to remember how to do something. You want to look at the pattern. You want to remember what yarn did work, what didn't work. But Many, many, many years from now, so like decades from now, maybe even a century from now, this might be one of the things that becomes a family heirloom. I have a handwritten cookbook from my great-grandmother. It was her, it's her printing, it's her handwriting, these are her notes, there are her thumbprints from cooking in the margin, and it's one of the most precious things that I own because this is a woman I didn't get to know very well. She lived very, very far away from me, and um, she died shortly after I was born. But of course, she is one of the progenitors in my family. And being able to see this little bit of her character and have this thing, this physical thing that she kept track of, her notes, um, the recipes that she really liked, uh, you know, like her, her comments on things that people did or didn't like, or her substitutions, it's just a thrill to go through and look at it. And putting together a project journal with that in mind might seem silly and maybe even a bit vain <laughs> to some of us, but you never know who might be looking at it down the road and will just enjoy so much about it. They'll enjoy the kinds of yarns that were available, the way that the pattern labels looked, um, you know, for your yarn that you bought, maybe stickers, maybe the kind of prints on the fabric or the paper that you bought. These things all come in giant trends and then like a hundred years later, you know, people have forgotten a lot of what that sort of everyday life looked like. So keeping a journal or some kind of, you know, uh, organized project kit like that is is worth it. It's good for you and it's good for people coming behind you. <laughs> 
Um, so that's what I'm going to leave you with. Sort of if a little bit of a little bit of um, what is that nostalgia? Forward-thinking nostalgia? What is it if it's nostalgia before it's even happened? I'm not even sure. <laughs> but that is what I have been up to lately. I am reorganizing my patterns. I am starting a new binder. We thought you might like to see it today since we haven't done a project journal in a while, a video update. And if any of you are interested in seeing me actually putting together a um, like an installment, so taking the pattern and putting it together and the way I kind of lay it out and stuff, if you'd like to see that, let us know and we'll maybe do a little video of that down the road too. This is sort of fun. It's Like I say, it's crochet adjacent. This is all to do with how I try to organize all of my patterns and keep track of it all and to make it fun to go back and look at down the road. Oh, and also so I don't, don't miss my notes. I make notes constantly when I'm making something and it's a good place to keep it all in one spot because I'm always going back and doing something again. Um, and I cannot remember every little thing I did. <laughs> so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed um, my little haul of new um, scrapbooking slash office supplies for back to journaling as opposed to back to school. And um, hopefully we brought you a little bit of inspiration and you can work on your own project journal. Share with me your ideas, your pictures, anything you might have put together on your own. Um, you can catch us on Instagram, you can catch us on Twitter, um, and if you've just got fun ideas or comments, please leave them below in the comment section. And that's it. We will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, however you happen to be crafting with your time right now, and uh, have a great week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!